Christmas. To introduce uh, this gentleman over here, in case any of you thought that Deacon Bob had doubled in size, lost all of his hair, and grew a beard. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, this is Father Eric Bullock. Father Bullock is a newly ordained priest. He was ordained on the Feast of Pentecost this past spring. I was away that weekend to be at his ordination and his first Mass. He is from the Diocese of Peoria. Some of you uh, might remember him. He has been here before. He actually did the walking pilgrimage with us from St. John's to St. Martin's on Palm Sunday. And also, uh, he preached here at All Saints Parish on the second Sunday of Lent. There were like 20 seminarians that uh, were there that weekend with him. Notice that he's here by himself now. Uh, so, okay. <clears throat> so, today's the Feast of the Holy Family. In the midst of the Christmas season, the first Sunday is dedicated to the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. As we meditate upon the family that God himself became a part of. And yet we know that even if we look at theologically, the family has even deeper origins than just the fact that Jesus chose to enter the family. We believe that in our basic theology of the Trinity, that the Trinity is familial love. That when God made mankind in his image and his likeness, he made them male and female, and thus the creation of the image of God is family. And thus the creation of Adam and Eve is God literally entering into the family and allowing the family to become his image here on earth. The family is very, very, very holy. And thus, at the creation of the world, the family is set aside as sacred. At the recreation of the world, where Jesus comes, Jesus Christ comes to save all humanity. Once again, the family is sacred. The family is holy. We believe, it's actually in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, in the section on marriage. A little quote here. The well-being of society and the world is caught up in the well-being of marriage and family. I'll repeat that. The well-being of society and the world is caught up in the well-being of marriage and family. Because family literally is the building block of any society in the world. If you do not have strong families, you cannot have a strong society. You can't. And that's when we look out in our world. We're like, oh, well, now that makes sense. What's missing from society in the year 2015? Really strong families. The family is under attack, marriage is under attack, and so our society, as we see it, seems some days to be literally just crumbling apart. And thus we, very beautifully, the Catholic Church comes together on a weekend and says, we need to honor and reverence the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and strive from the bottom of our hearts to imitate that. To do so, I have a clever little acronym that we're going to speak about this weekend. We're going to take the word family, F-A-M-I-L-Y, six letters. And each letter is going to stand for a word. So here we go. F-A-M-I-L-Y, forget about me, I love you. Forget about me, I love you. If we want to live as families, if we want to have solid families, if we want to understand family, we have to understand that at the center of family love is forget about me, I love you. Let's cast our eyes upon Mary and Joseph and Jesus. In our imaginings of what happened in Nazareth, were any of them self-centered, selfish, or focused on themselves? No. Mary, from the moment of her conception, but also at the Annunciation, at the birth, Mary's life is an outpouring of herself to her child. 
We believe the same that Joseph lived to serve his wife and his child. We believe that Jesus lived. It said that he went to Nazareth and was obedient to them. This whole aspect of an understanding of the workings of the family is forget about me. I love you. This is, of course, true of families, but it's true of really any social organization. You can't have a social organization that actually functions unless people forget themselves and serve others. If you don't, if you have a bunch of individuals that want to do whatever they want, what do you have? Chaos. Look at our world. If you, if you look, look at the social problems in our world right now, what's behind every one of them? It's all about me. It's all about me. When I want it, how I want it, it's all about me. Look at this younger generation, which is now void of what we knew, and I'm really, really old, what, what I knew of as family. What would the older generation say about this younger generation? They're what? They're narcissistic, they're selfish, and it's all about them. What would we say about the greatest generation of America, as we call them now, that are dying? It wasn't about them. It was about family. It was about love. It was about giving yourself away, even if need be dying or living in poverty out of love for the other. F-A-M-I-L-Y, forget about me, I love you. This is our call. And this is what I believe we're invited to understand in a deeper sense on this beautiful weekend. So I'd like to look at the book of Sirach and the book of Colossians, which are some of my favorite readings. When I was a bad kid, which was often the case, my mom, who's a very good mother, would often have me like copy things. I will tell you, parents, I'm just gonna give you a tip here. If you ever wanna have your kids copy something, break out the book of Sirach, chapter three, and just have them write it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. One time I had to write an apology letter to my brother, and it had to be like 150 words. I had the word very in it, I think, a hundred times. <laughs> I am very, 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 and like times a hundred, sorry. Just say enough. okay. So I want to first uh, start by addressing young children that are here at Mass today. So please raise your hand if you're under the age of 18. Raise them higher, kids, so we can see where you're at, so we know who we're talking to. Kids, raise your hands. <laughs> Disobedience. Okay, so this is going down. This is what the book of Sirach says. To all children, by the way, because you're going to see the book of Sirach is going to turn even on the adults, but we're talking to young children first off. Here we go. God sets a father in, in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over his sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. St. Paul says, children, obey your parents in everything. For this is pleasing to the Lord. Children that are in the womb right now to the age of 18, I just want to make this very, very clear. If you are disobedient to your parents, it is a mortal sin. Unless your parents are abusive or asking you to do something that is immoral. If it is, then you should come and talk to me, and I mean that. If your parents are abusive, you should come and talk to a priest or some other adult. But if your parents ask you to do anything, you are called to obey them. Now some of you, of course, have come to the confession and you've confessed, this, the, here's, here's, here's the confession of a lot of you. Blessed Father, for us in the last confession was like the last time that parents made me come to this thing. And um, uh, I've been like mean to my brother a few times. And like uh, one time I kicked our cat. Of course, I'm like, good for you. And uh, <laughs> you would be amazed, by the way, the sins that I get confessed about animals. It's, like, it's unbelievable. Like, cats and dogs. I didn't feed my dog one time. But, so then they're like, and uh, I, I'm not 
always obedient to my parents and sometimes I back talk and I don't always do my chores and I don't do my homework and sometimes we don't go to bed on time. And this is what I say to your child. I say, let's talk about the fact that you aren't living out the fourth commandment. And I look at them and I say, who bought your shoes? And they're like, my mom. Who bought your pants? My mom. Who bought your shirt? My mom. Who bought that jacket that you're wearing? My mom. Do you have a house that you live in? Yeah. Who bought that house? My dad. Do you sleep in a bed every night? Yeah. Who bought your bed? Uh huh. <laughs> your mom and dad did. Uh huh. Okay. Do you eat three meals a day? Yeah. Where those come from? Uh, one of them's from the lunch lady. <laughs> Who pays for that meal? Uh, your parents do. Do you have water in your house, electricity in your house? Do you have one of those stupid phones that I ate? Yeah. Who paid for all of that? My parents. Do you play sports? Do you go somewhere in a car? Do your parents have a car? Do you have any hobbies or interests? Have you ever been on vacation? Have you ever gone to a camp? Yeah. Who paid for all of that? Your parents. Who gave you your DNA? What's that? <laughs> and then I look at that. I was like, you have nothing. You are nothing without your parents. Your parents are absolutely everything in your life. They have sacrificed and they will continue to sacrifice for you. And I want to ask you one question. What have you ever given back to them? Besides an ornament made out of popsicle sticks that they paid for. <laughs> that they cherish is the one thing that you ever gave to them. And then they just look at me. The fourth commandment is a commandment of justice. We are in relationships with people, and our parents pour our lives out to us. They give absolutely everything, and then they're like, hey, take out the trash. And the kid throws a temper tantrum. Do your chores. And the kids are stubborn, won't do them. Go to bed. They don't go to bed. Do the dishes. They don't do the dishes. Get straight A's, and they come home with D's and C's. And the whole time, that young child is failing in understanding what it is to be a human being. For those of you who are employees and try to employ people, what is the hardest thing in the world today to find? A person who is disciplined with a work ethic that even knows what it is to work. Why is that? Because they don't have good parents. Because they were never taught. They have no discipline. They have no work ethic. They believe that they deserve everything because everything should be given to them with no strings attached because they weren't raised in a family with parents who taught these kids what it is to be a human being and how to survive in society and the world. I had excellent and still have excellent parents because they taught me obedience and discipline and hard work and I didn't get what I wanted. I can't, like seriously, like, as a kid, the way that we raise kids now is like everything is about them. They get whatever they want, they eat whatever they want, they eat whenever they want. And then we wonder why they're selfish, narcissistic, and totally disobedient. They've been raised that way. And the sad thing is, is that they'll never actually succeed in society because they'll think that everybody is supposed to serve them. Parents, you are not your child's friend. That's why you're called a parent. It's a different category. Sorry, you lost that. Now, can you love them? Of course you're supposed to love them. St. Paul makes it very clear. Parents, do not provoke your children. You've all seen parents who provoke their children, and it's horrible. But children, your ears better be open right now. Every time that you are disobedient to your parents, it is an absolute dishonor to them. Every time you get bad grades, it's a dishonor to your parents. 
Now, if you're trying your hardest and you have a tutor and you're asking to teach for help and you come home with a C, then thanks be to God. Your parents know that you are working for that. But you come home with Bs and Cs and you can get A's, shame on you. Shame on you. You are dishonoring your family's name. You drink before you're 21, shame on you. You are dishonoring your mom and dad because you want to know what I know about it. I hear about it. You have sex before you get married, shame on you. Because you're not living what your parents want you to live. Your parents should say, take out the trash, and you say, mom and dad, should I also vacuum for you? And do you want me to dust the whole house? Because, I mean, really, you give, it's your house. I mean, I, I'm honored to live here. I'm honored to, have, to, be, to be alive, to breathe. My whole life should be in service to my parents. And in fact, this is where it's going to turn, parents. Isn't that what Syrac is saying? This never really ends, does it? Our parents wipe our butts, clean up our vomit. They dress us. And thus, what are we called to do when they turn old? And Sirach even says, when they lose their mind, to care for them. They care for us, and out of justice and love and honor, we then care for them. My dear children, out of love, we are called to serve. When we realize how much our parents love and sacrifice for us, and this is the whole thing, like, kids look at these laws that their parents made for them, be home by 11, as like, horror. Why did they make that law? Because they love you, and they know what happens after 11 o'clock. Do your homework. Oh my gosh. Why do they want you to do your homework? Because they love you, and they don't want you to be stupid. Get off the internet, get off your phone, get off, stop playing video games. Your parents are not inflicting torture upon you, it's called love. And yet we read it differently than what's really intended. At the heart of Christianity, forget about me, I love you. Children, look at your parents. And in our hearts we should say, forget about me, I love you. Kids, we don't get what we want because you're never gonna get what you want as a kid. Ask your parents if they get what they want every single day at work. Go, go over breakfast today. I want you to ask your parents if they get everything they want at work. Because if that's how you're being raised, then that's how you're going to think, and then you're going to quit your job, or you're just not going to work ever. You just be like, welfare is good enough that I can do whatever I want, and someone just gives me whatever I want. At the heart of this is the message that we are called to forget about ourselves. It's not about... It's about me loving and serving. St. Paul makes it very clear in the letter to Colossians. Put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, of heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another. Bearing with one another. Family love is not always easy. It's beautiful, though. But it's not always easy. Now, parents, let's talk about you just for a second. St. Paul in his letter to Colossians says, Wives, be subordinate to your husbands as is proper to the Lord. Subordinate, break the word down. What do you have? Sub, under, ordinate, order. Under the order of your husband. Wives, what is the order of your husband? Women are an image of the church. Men are an image of Christ. What is the role of Christ? Protect, defend, uplift, love, glorify, and serve. Protect, defend, uplift, love, glorify, and serve. What is, what is the role of a man? What is the order of a man? Protect, defend, uplift, love, glorify, and serve. Women, you're supposed to be under this order. You're supposed to allow a man to protect, defend, uplift, love, glorify, and serve you. As you know, I'm at East Central High School all the time. I will open a door for a high school girl, and I kid you not, I will get back talked by her. You don't need to do that. Stop that. I actually make my high school boys on the cross country team, some of them are here, open the doors and hold the doors for the girls who, and I get, I get, I get back talk from the girls. They don't need to do that. Yes, they do. And they will. We live in a world now where women have been so wounded by men that they will not receive from a man protect, defend, uplift, love, glorify, and serve. They have been trained by our society and the world to survive on their own, to be by themselves, to fight against people even serving them. 
Women, I'm just gonna tell you, part of your role is now to, uh, to die to yourself and to encourage men to be men, to ask men to be men, because they don't even know how anymore. Chivalry has been killed, but someone has to bring it back, because ladies, how you feel in your heart is not right. That longing that you have is a good longing. Husbands, love your wives and avoid all bitterness towards them. What is this love that we are supposed to have, men? As we said, protect, defend, uplift, love, glorify, and serve. That's what we're supposed to be doing to our wife and to our children every single day. Do we do that? And then the question is, do we do it without bitterness? What's the key to doing that? Forget about me, I love you. When we choose to get married, men, Father Bullock and I are married. Gentlemen, for those of you who are married, when we choose to be married, we make the decision to say that we will protect, defend, uplift, love, glorify, and serve our brides and our children until the day that we die. That's what we are called to do. Forget about me. It's not about what I want. It's about me loving the other person and in that finding joy. Once again, these statements are not intended. If your husband is abusive, I am not telling you to subject yourself to him. I'm telling you to get help. Now and soon. St. Paul and our Lord is not asking people to be abused or suppressed or shut down. St. Paul is inviting people to love as Christ loves us. And in it, we will find freedom. The revival of the family is absolutely demanded in our era. The revival of the family is quintessential because the well-being of society in the world is caught up in the well-being of marriage and family. If we want a new society, if we want a new world, it's gonna be us living as families, committed, consecrated. It's gonna be children all the more living and thriving in obedience to their parents. Parents loving and serving their children and loving and serving one another in that bond of marriage. In this and only in this will we have any chance of imitating the Holy Family. We can talk about trying to be like the Holy Family and going to church and praying. Quintessential needs to happen. Please keep doing it. But it also is how we live. Forget about me. I love you. Let's pray for the grace today that no matter what our role is in a family, as a mother, as a father, as a child, as a godfather, as a grandfather, as a great-grandfather, as a niece, a nephew, or a cousin, that we are called to love as Christ loves us, that we are called to be a part of a family, to forget about ourselves and to love the other. In doing so, may God be glorified. In doing so, may we re regain society in the world by love. And in doing so, may God be praised.